What's up everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. I forgot to plug in my mic, so I'm gonna plug in my mic. There we go, hopefully that's a little bit better. And I've been inspired by a bunch of people, <clears throat> baseball card junkies, Mike Go. They've just been going live lately and just doing some fun rummaging, having a good time. And I, I just thought I'd do the same thing. I thought that, that's a great idea. And so I thought, man, I'll just go live. Why not? Let's just do some rummaging. And so here's what we're going to do. You see the, I've got this box right here that is all Hall of Fame cards player cards and I thought man let's just go through some of them that'd be kind of fun and so that's what I'm gonna do getting it pulled up here so if there's some chatting hey Chico what's up Cuban collector Mike O Mike O my inspiration is here <clears throat> hello Eric um, thanks for being a subscriber thank welcome to the family uh, G -A -G, G -A G is on Jason Aaron Goldberg my brother is on <laughs> my twin brother or Anna his his uh, stepdaughter so <clears throat> I'm just gonna start going through some cards so it's funny I've been watching some of this uh, rummage stuff and I'm like man I don't know how these people organize their stuff but for me it's this is just gonna be alphabetical so the first Hall of Famer is just Hank Aaron now I'm pretty sure that's not a real Hank Aaron autograph I'm just throwing that out there I don't think that's legit, and I don't think that's legit either, but I got one of these that is slabbed, so there you go. Thank you, Canadian Cards. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome back to the hobby. I also, there, in here will be some uh, memorabilia cards too as I'm rummaging and just having fun with this. Here's a Hank Aaron Triple Threads jersey card, number to eight. I'll try to do this quick. I got a giant... I'll just do this as long as we want to do it until it's not boring anymore. There is a tribute bat card, tribute to the throne. Hank Aaron, just an amazing ball player. Absolutely amazing. Hello, Rodrigo. Uh, Roberto Alomar. It's a cool sticker autograph, jersey card from Topps Tribute, number to 75. Kind of cool. This was a big deal card back in the day. This is from uh, SPX Force. I think it's 97. And uh, it's got four players on it. You can see them there. Uh, Gonzalez, Pudge, Alomar, and Manny Ramirez. And it's signed by Alomar. And I think this one's numbered to 100. There you go. Pretty cool. So, Hello, fellow cardboard cult. What's up, Mark? Might be the funniest guy on YouTube right now for sure. I laugh out loud every time I watch one of Mark's videos. What's up, Andy? Roberto Alomar signature, Donra signature. Here's another Roberto Alomar. So what I'm going to try to do with this video, part of the accomplishment I want to make is uh, the Ticket Leprechaun is doing a contest right now to show all of your Hall of Fame autographs and that's just not going to happen. I've had so, and I've done a ton of videos recently, at least in the last uh, six months or a year. Oh, it's a cool Walter Austin, Walt Austin uh, jersey, something. Uh, so I've done a lot of Hall of Fame videos recently, and uh, really enjoyed doing those in the past so i've pretty much shown all of my hall of fame autograph collection at one time or another except for this box and so i'm going to try to kill a couple of birds here another walter alston jersey card hey we're through one little stack we're doing great there's another walt alston jersey card i don't know why i pick these things up i just do i just love hall of famer stuff hall of famers are awesome so this is my response for the Ticket Leprechaun. I hope he counts this. Uh, I've already sent him my list of all my Hall of Fame autographs. There's a cool 74 Tops Sparky Anderson. Uh, look how Sparky's, 
like he always does this. He'll sign Sparky and this Anderson just kind of trails off and always kind of up and to the left. It's just funny how he does that. Uh, there's a Sparky Anderson jersey card. So my collection, you know, I try to have an autograph. And if there is a relic card of a player, I am trying to get, I try to get those too. Um, yes, I do have an Ellie Fox autograph. I have at least one, maybe two. Um, I don't think I'll be, sh I don't think I have them in this batch of stuff. There's a cool 1956 reprint team tops, which is his, this is a reprint of his rookie card from 56 autograph. I'm a big fan of SP legendary cuts, pretty much anything SP legendary cuts. I'm a big fan of this one's numbered to 50 on card marked for the hall. What's up, BF Golf? Coops cards. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. This is just a little late night fun, just to do something different. Louis Aparicio again. Like, how many Louis Aparicios can one guy have? Oh, here's another one. And another one. A little 05 Leather and Lumber. What a great name for a... And that's actually like a piece of wood embedded in the card that Aparicio signed. Here's another one from another year. I think that's 04. The other one was 05. There's 04. Those are number two. That was numbered to 224. These are all in top loaders. Watching the Blazers. Nice. There's a Luke Appling. Another Luke Appling. Another Luke Appling. So I have over 2,200 Hall of Famer autographs total. Um, so you'll see a bunch of them here because there's a ton of them in here. And then all the jersey and relic, you know, all the relic cards are in here too. Luke Appling there, relic jersey card. Richie Ashburn, any of these cards that you see that I show, um, they're all from Blue Jacket 66. He sent me an amazing care package <laughs> a while back. I did a... The uh, yeah, that's right, Richie. Here's a Richie Ashburn jersey card, but it says he's playing for the Mets, so I know that pisses off Mike O. But thanks again, Mike, for that awesome uh, Pudge Rodriguez autograph last night. I really appreciate that. Here is these are pretty cool. This is from National Treasures. It's a it's a back card of um, Earl Avril. But I love they do the nicknames on these. I don't even know how to pronounce that. That Earl of Snohomish. Snohomish. And then on the back, it, uh, let's see, turn it over. The Earl of Snohomish. Snohomish, Washington is where he grew up. So there you go. <laughs> it says he played ball for the Snohomish Pill Chuckers. <laughs> That's great. Uh, he didn't make the big leagues until 27 years old, but he played 13 years and made the Hall of Fame. Uh, let's see. To be getting the Hall of Fame, how many? Do you, who knows how many years you have to play to be eligible to be in the Hall of Fame? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, there is. I do know, but I'm just wondering who else knows. Um, Jeff Bagwell. 10 is correct, Mark. 10 is correct, Mike. Oh, yes. So I guess Mike Trout will be eligible after this year or something, I think. <clears throat> There's a. This is really cool, actually. Uh, as soon as Harold Baines got into the Hall of Fame, and I'm one of those, I, I could go either way. Hey, JT, how are you? Um, on Harold Baines, look, he's in, whatever. And uh, so I went, I always went, if there's a Hall of Famer that has played for the Rangers, I try to get a card that's autographed by that player on a Rangers card. And this was the one, one I found. So I love it. Hey, let's get another stack. We're only on the Bs. So 
This might be a 30 minute video. I don't know. And when these, like when Harold Baines got in, I just went nuts, started buying all the stuff I could find that was reasonable. Stadium club there. That's a pretty recent one. I think it's, let's see what year it is. 2016 on card. That's a, that's a cool card. I love stadium club photography. I know a lot of you guys do. Yes, you missed Biggio. You want me to go back? Oh, no, wait. I haven't gotten to Biggio yet. Baines is in front of Biggio in the uh, alphabet. It's a neat card. This is back from uh, Fleer something or other. can't remember what this is from. I'll look on the back in a second. It's a <clears throat> dual card. of. It shows Frank Baker and uh, Babe Ruth. It's actually Frank Baker's. It's a Frank Home Run Baker bat relic. They actually played together for the Yankees. Although it's saying here he was with the Philadelphia A's, and that's true. But Frank Baker did play for the Yankees with Ruth for a couple of years, if I remember right. There you go. Well, I don't. For some reason, I have one. Two of these, two Dave Bancroft relics, numbered to 99. He's a rare Hall of Famer guy. What is up, Phil Filmington? There's another Dave Bancroft. What you'll see a lot is Panini is incredibly, especially these old guys. I mean, it's the same picture, right? And then they use even the same picture on the back. I mean, it's like, come on. You can't find another picture of Dave Bancroft in your whole archives of anything. Oh, this guy's pretty good. Ernie Banks. These legendary signatures, they're really hard to see on camera. They, they look, I mean, you look at the glare, it's terrible. But these are really cool in person or when you can see them. This one's numbered to 25, Ernie Banks. This is from 07. I love those. I have a bunch of those. There is the... Nabisco All-Star Autographs. This was a set put into crackers and cookies and stuff by Nabisco. I want to say, let's look. Oh, I can't remember. It doesn't show. I don't want to take it out. But there's, I don't know, Drysdale and Fing Raleigh Fingers and a bunch of guys. I have a bunch of them. Um, thanks, Mark. I'm trying to be an up-and-coming channel. Let's play two. That's right. Ernie Banks. This is another... The, if you want to get an Ernie Banks autograph, this is a great one to, you know, these, you can find these, you know, kind of food issues pretty cheap, actually. And they're on card and they're legit. So definitely, you know, if you need an Ernie Banks autograph, I would definitely look for either the Hillshire Farms or the Nabisco. They're really easy to get. Um, there's a cool relic from Legendary Cuts. You'll see that. A lot. SP Legendary Cuts. This number to 50. I miss Upper Deck so much. I mean, they did some really, really great stuff. Here is a Leaf 25th Anniversary Johnny Bench. Acetate. Clear acetate. On card. Pretty neat. Look at that. Hey, it's personalized. To Mike. Johnny Bench. If I see an IP autograph that is personalized to Mike at a show or online or whatever, I pretty much am going to try to buy it because I just think that's so cool, even though it wasn't written to me, Mike. But nobody has the name Mike. I mean, it's a completely unique name. Here's some custom I got from somebody. I Actually, I think I either got this in a lot or something. Interesting, but kind of a cool custom. This set I love too. This is the uh, 2000 and, or sorry, 1997 Donruss Significant Signatures, Donruss Signature. Cool on card Johnny Bench. I have quite a few of those too. Johnny did not sign in the correct spot. You're supposed to sign over here. A lot of players did that. They kind of missed that. Here's a jersey card of Johnny Bench. There's an extra Hall of Fame Heroes, Yogi Berra, that I have. I have so many Hall of Fame Heroes signed cards. I love them, love them, love them. 
Just love them. The back card for Yogi Berra from Fleer Inscribed. Man, y'all remember back in the early 90s and early 2000s, there were so many different products being put out because there was Fleer and Upper Deck and uh, you had Donruss and Tops. I mean, it's crazy. Here we go. Craig Biggio. Somebody was wanting Craig Biggio. Here you go. And there is the museum collection of Biggio on card number 99. Got some more Biggio coming up here. I'm getting another stack ready. There's a uh, 1990 Tops All Star card, Crick Biggio. Here is a Ultimate. God, what a great <laughs> set Ultimate was. Upper Deck Ultimate was just gorgeous. Look at the wrinkles on the top and the bottom. Right there and right down here. That card has got some mega creases. I don't think it would grade very well. Just saying. Uh, let's see. There is a... Am I back? I don't know if I ever left. I don't know what's going on. Am I here? Can you see me? Um, recollection collection was something that uh, Donruss did. Very cool though. Burt Bly 11. And then they numbered them on the back. So that basically they buy back cards, had the player sign. This one's numbered to 52. So this is actually an 85 Donruss card. They just stamp it and put that little, you can see right under the Burt, there's like a little impression. They emboss the card. Uh-oh, Mike O's going to get mad at me. This is a new card. It's a 2019 Topps Heritage Real Ones autograph of Burt Bly 11. There we go. Yes, Mike O, I will get back to Don. I will get to Don Sutton. He's in the S's. I told you guys I'm a sucker for these. Look at that. To Mike, your friend, Burt Bly 11. I didn't even know Burt Bly 11 was my friend, but he's my friend. Look at that. Thanks, Bert, for being my friend. Here is Tops Retired. I know Mike O loves these too. I do. I think they're great cards. Really cool design. I told you guys, if a Hall of Famer played for the Rangers, I got to try to get a card of his signed on a Rangers card, and there's the Bert Bly 11. So, I'm going to get another stack. Moving right, moving right along, cruising. Hey, there's another Burt Bly 11. This is a Diamond Icons from Prime Cuts, which is a, was a playoff thing in 2012. Double jersey swatch there. Numbered to something on the back, let me see. Ooh, numbered to 25. Okay, you guys, I, I've been saying this a lot because I'm a sucker for a lot of different sets, but... Uh, I love Millennium Marks from Donner Signature Series. These are just classic. This is the uh, 97. What's up, Wicked? So there's the Wade Boggs on the Yankees from 97. Here's the 98 version. There's a green, a blue, which is the Century Marks. And then there's a yellow, a red. There's all sorts of colors, and they're, they're really awesome. I actually toyed with trying to get all the Hall of Famers from that. But guess what? I have too many projects all ready. Oh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. just hit his first Major League home run. Well, good for him. He should be in the Hall of Fame. His card should be worth more than Mickey Mantle's. That makes so much sense to me. Not really. I love this set too, Baseball Heroes. There you go. Here is a... So here's a thing, uh, this company called Pastime used to do, it's like a repack product and they would buy cards, autograph, they would basically certify them and then put them in a one touch and put their little, um, I don't know, label or whatever thing that is on the top. 
seal, I guess. And so here's the Wade Boggs rookie card autographed. And it has a JSA sticker on the back. Not that too many people forge Wade Boggs rookie, uh, autographs because he signs a lot. Here's a cool tribute card. This is from, I did a challenge with Silver Jackify where we said, hey, let's, let's, let's try to do something where we can get all the cards that we actually want for the price of a box of tribute. Like just go buy singles, but spend the same amount that you would spend on a box and go buy cards that you would like in your collection. And I was able to get, I don't know, like three times as many cards of all Hall of Famers, jerseys and autographs and all sorts of stuff for the price of one tribute box, whatever year this was. Let me look. I think it's 2018. It is 2018. So we both did it and we both were so much happier and it just goes to show don't break boxes. Just go buy singles. Spend the same amount of money if you want, but what's the point of if you just go buy the cards you want? That's my theory. A lot of people don't believe that, but whatever. That's okay. Break boxes if you want, because it just makes more singles for me. There's a cool Epic Materials Wade Boggs from, again, Upper Deck. They, they knew how to do it back in the day. Jim Bottomley, old school Hall of Famer. Relic card, serious shine on this. I'm afraid to move it because I might blind you guys as you're watching this. But great Hall of Famer, Jim Bottomley. There's a relic card of his. What's up, Bowman53? Uh, another Jim Bottomley back card. Lou Bedrew, Hall of Fame Heroes. That is true, Andy. You do not get the joy of pulling a $1 autograph of someone who will be worth nothing someday. That's right. Happy, happy, joy, joy. There's Lou Bedrew, great Indian shortstop. This is from, um, who is it from? Dave, Blue Jacket 66. Another, I have a lot of Lou Bedrew, so there's another one. Here's one on a 61 Fleer. I don't know how many guys have 61 Fleer autograph cards, but they look really cool. So BF Golf says he just made his first video. How cool. Welcome to the video making club. It's a lot of fun. There is another Lou Bedrew bat card. Hey, guess what? Legendary cuts, look at that. Oh, and another legendary cuts. Lou Bedrew. Very cool. Boudreau, you're right. I'm sorry. Lou Boudreau. My bad. I don't have a Sid Bream Hall of Fame autograph because Sid Bream is not in the Hall of Fame. Roger Bresnahan, who is in the Hall of Fame. Look at that picture. Look at that old school catcher's mask, man. That had to be just, you had to be just petrified. <laughs> I mean, petrified. It's okay, Kevin. You can be that guy. That doesn't, that's all right. I don't mind being a uh, Corrected. It's a pretty cool card. It's the George Brett autograph is smudged, um, but I got this I think from Garrett Card Cutter. We'll do all do a autograph George Brett Gaylord Perry from the Pine Tar incident. God, I remember that. I was ten years old and I remember that because George Brett went absolutely freaking bananas when he was called out for having too much Pine Tar on his bat against the Yankees. Billy Martin called him out on it, and you can go watch it. Go find that on YouTube, and you will uh, see how absolutely batshit crazy <laughs> if George Brett goes. And that's the only time I cuss is when I'm live, because I'm just kidding. I've already gone 24 minutes. I'm only on George Brett. Holy crap. Bat card, George Brett. I may have to do this in a series. This may have to be a series of live late night rummage okay so check this out here's the signature series of uh from 98 i guess 97 these are 97 i guess of lou brock where's his signature he didn't sign it well lou brock signed it on the back now do you know why a lot of the guys signed it on the back so in 1997 pack inserted autographs was a relatively new thing. This is like 20 years ago. And 
now it's very commonplace, but back then it was a new thing. And to sign the front of a card was thought to be sacrilege. It was like defacing and devaluing the card. So a lot of these guys that had never done pack inserted autographs before turned the card over and signed it on the back like Lou Brock. These are all numbered to 2000, by the way, which are awesome. That was in 97. By 2001, they all figured it out. So there you go. There's the Fleer Greats from 2000. It's either 2000 or 2001. Let's see. 2002. Man, I'm wrong both times. 2002, Fleer Greats. Lou Brock. There it is again. SP Legendary Cuts. Place in History Signatures. Lou Brock. Shiny Lou Brock. Shiny. Finest moments. I do like how they signed on the side. I have several of those. Those are cool. Hey, a Lou Brock jersey card from, guess what? SP Legendary Cuts. You can make a pretty epic set from, if you just went back to, you know, to Legendary Cuts and started doing a bunch of those. There's a little Jim Bunning on a Fleer Greats. Now what year is that? 2000, okay. Flew Greats did some awesome sets, some really iconic, oh, I shouldn't use that word, Dave will get mad at me. Uh, they did some great sets. Another Jim Bunning. These are great, Cooperstown from Panini. That's, that's actually one thing I think they did right. They did these really well, really cool. All the Hall of Famer stuff. Do y'all remember this product, Leaf Best of Baseball? There's a Jim Budding from that. On the Phillies. Oh, here you go, Mike O. There you go. Jim Bunning on the Phillies. Bam. There you go, Mike. Calm down. We got there. There's a cool Phillies Jim Bunning. Sweet spot. Classic. Oh. Jersey card. So back in, these are cool. Back in, uh, I want to say 04. Let me look real quick. Yep, 04. Donruss came out with kind of a tribute set to the design of Hall of Fame Heroes, and they put, you know, some new players in it using the same design, which is one of my favorite. And. This is the a Campanella dual game worn pants and game used bat. It's pretty bad ass. There's another quad relic from Upper Deck Premier, UD Premier, number to 49, I think, 48 of Campanella. Premier Remnants. How cool. Campy was so awesome. I mean, he was such a good ball player and won two or th maybe three MVP awards, actually. I would love to get some... I would love Jim Palmer, Jack Nicholas, or Tiger Woods autographs. They're just so expensive. Here we go into a absolute crap ton of Rod Carew's, because I'm a huge Rod Carew fan, so if I see his autos anything reasonable I'm picking him up his auto has gotten really bad lately because uh, he's just not in great health that's a really cool big jersey swatch on card autograph it's pretty neat I'm working on getting to some Kent to Colby I'll get there Fleer greats there's another buyback from leaf memories 85 leaf so that's an 85 leaf card that new leaf under brian gray brian gray i guess is his name bottom back and uh there you go number to 29. hold on guys i'm gonna just set a card here julie's banging on the wall trying to get my attention i'm on she doesn't know that i'm live so i'm gonna have to text her and say sorry honey um Let's see. I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> She's going to be like, 
You jack wagon. All right. This is the just pared down mic. Just, you know, hanging out. I don't have anybody on the phone. There's notable nicknames. Those are cool. But wait, his nickname is Sir Rodney, but he didn't sign it. You know, a lot of the guys on the on this subseries signed it with their nickname. But he did Hoff it, which is cool. Hoff 91. I love it. Rodney Carew. Uh, hey, another Rod Carew. It's one of those pastime autographs. So that one's number to 35, Legendary Signatures. It looks all scratched up, but it's not. It's just the case. What's up, Rookie Monster? Great name, by the way, Rookie Monster. Do you talk like the Cookie Monster? Like, I love baseball cards. <laughs> or was that, that may have been Yoda combined with the Cookie Monster and all of it sucked. <laughs> so there's Steve Carlton. Oh, there you go, Maiko, Steve Carlton. Oh, look at this, Steve Carlton. And if that wasn't enough, how about Steve Carlton? And, oh, why not? Steve Carlton. Oh, Steve Carlton. Tools of the trade. Great set. Great set. Steve Carlton, 300 Wins Club. Remember these from Pantheon? They did a whole bunch of different series. I love the old powder blue Phillies uniforms. And Steve Carlton bat card. Not that he's known for his hitting, but hey, why not put a bat card of him out there? Sure. Gary Carter. So this Gary Carter card, I actually think came out after he died. Let me see. Because they obviously had a... Yeah, 2013. So somebody look up when Gary Carter died, because I don't know off the top of my head, but I wonder if that came out after he died. Because I know they did this, like Duke Snyder has had autographs come out after he died. Because they just have a surplus of stickers. There is another, just like the Campy, um, one of those 04 tribute cards to the Hall of Fame Heroes design with a Gary Carter jersey. Another Gary Carter jersey. Where's all my Gary Carter guys? I don't know. Man, I have so many cepedas. Here we go. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. It's an old Kmart card. That MVP set that they did. I think, who got one of those sets recently? Somebody got one. Andy, maybe. There's a 70 Tops Cepeda signed. 71. Leaf Legends of Sport. I don't know why you're showing all these cards now, but I like them. Well, just just cuz Wayne, this is just me coming on and just doing some rummage, going through a box of Hall of Fame autographs that I've never shown before on the channel, kind of as a you know response for the Ticket Leprechaun. He wanted to see all our Hall of Fame autographs, and I've done so many different aspects of my Hall of Fame collection. This is just kind of the Spillover stuff. Just great stuff. I don't know. There's the Topps Retired uh, series still in its case. So they, they came like this, you know, encased, kind of uncirculated was the word they used back then. And Jersey card. Here we go. Great old player. Uh, Decade greats of Mickey Cochran for the Philadelphia A's. Amazing catcher. So, cool back card there. Some of these guys, I don't just have random autographs. Their autographs are so expensive, they're locked away. Here's a bat card of Eddie Collins, number to 10. 
There's a bat card of Jimmy Collins. There's a cool Bobby Cox Yankees greats. Here is a Bobby Cox jersey card. Authentic game-worn uniform. But man, what a run he had. Woo! The Braves were awesome for a really, really long time. There is Sam, Wahoo Sam Crawford, bat card. Well, I have one Sam Crawford bat card, but you can have two. There's another one of those Topps Tribute Milestone Materials. These things are just all kinds of shine. His, celebrating his 300th career triple in 1916, 103 years ago, that's all. There's a Joe Cronin bat card. Oops, sorry. There's a Kiki Kyler. If you don't know any of these guys, like if you're going, who the heck is Kiki Kyler or Joe Cronin or whatever, go look them up. Go look on Baseball Reference. Um, educate yourself. It's fun to learn about the hobby's history. I mean, the hobby's been around. I mean, the, the game has been around for so long. There's an Andre. Uh oh, here we go. Where, where's Ground Chuck? Because here we go into the Andre Dawson craziness. There's one. There's a bat auto from Tribute, number 75. I, and I don't know. I think Mike O said it. Whenever the refractors are the same color as the team colors, man, it just works so well. There's Timelines 04. What's up, Greg? How are you? And KB Cards, Matthew. Got lots of awesome people. There is a Cooperstown Auto. All right, got to get another stack. Hang on. This is a Topps uncirculated card. This was actually like a, let me see if I can't describe this right. I think this was kind of one of those when they didn't have a redemption, it was kind of, they made some, you know, weird, this is just a one-off design that was only used for redemptions and, you know, un, unfulfilled redemptions that they would just send these out. There's that. I need to get this stack bigger. I'm going to be running out soon. Hey, we're on the D's already, so that's good. There's a very cool Topps Five Star jersey autograph of the Hawk. There's another Dawson. Lumber and leather. Leather and lumber. There's the Panini Cooperstown. Tops Tier 1, number to 50. Sorry, guys, as I pull these off, it kind of... There's a jersey card. This is cool. It's a jersey card, dual jersey, of two Hall of Famers now from the Expos days. I love the Expos uniforms and emblems and everything. you got Andre Dawson and Tim Raines. There's a... Jersey swatch of Dizzy Dean. Awesome. For the Cardinals. The Rangers play the Cardinals this weekend. And I know like Springfield John, I think, is coming down to go to one of the games. Big Cardinals guy. There's a Bill Dickey jersey. That's so cool. Number to 50 from SP Legendary Cuts. What do y'all think so far? Is this fun? Do y'all want me to keep going? I feel I've gone 40 minutes already. And if this is boring, the heck out of you. I don't want to keep doing it, but if y'all are enjoying just seeing this stuff, I'll keep going for a little while. There's Larry Doby bat card. I love it on the comments. It's like crickets. Everybody's like, everybody left, I guess. Like Bobby Door. Here we go with a bunch of Bobby Doors. I have a bunch of Bobby Door because he, I think he signed more autographs than any other Hall of Famer in history. 
Dave Archer. Of course, Dave, Amish Dave says, Dave's a big proponent of long videos. So he's like, man, you can go for six hours. So he'd love it. There's another door from Leaf Limited. There's a pastime from 86 Donruss Highland. Keep going. Okay. All right. I'll keep Let's see. Reconnect. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I think I'm back. So if I cut out for a second, I'm sorry. No down votes. That's right. But I only got eight thumbs up. Why don't you guys, I got all you guys watching. Give me, you know, why, well, you're just sitting there. Just hit the like button. I mean, good grief. It's not that hard. Bobby Doerr's done. We're on to Don Drysdale. It's a cool jersey card. I love the deep blue. It's got to be from like a warm-up jacket or something. Leo DeRocher. Leo the Lip was his nickname. Because man, as a manager, he argued with umpires like nobody's business. The jersey card. Here we go with my crazy Dennis Eckersley. Here's one on the Cardinals. There's another one. This is a cool looking card. These were neat. These were from Top Supreme was the name of it, I think. Die cut, neat. Johnny Evers for the Chicago Cubs. Who can tell me Johnny Evers' infield mates? This poem that uses all three of their last names. See if you can't tell me that. That'd be cool. Here's a Bob Feller. Man, Bob Feller was good. Good. Joe Tinker, Frank Chance. That's right. Tinker to Evers to Chance. Tinker to Evers to Chance. There's a got old, old poem. More Feller. I got a bunch of Bob Feller, so we'll just ram those out. Bam. Bob Feller. 61 Fleer. Or is that 60 Fleer? I can't remember. One of them. Little Sports Illustrated. Remember when Sports Illustrated was making baseball cards or was involved in making baseball? Fleer was making them, but Sports Illustrated put their name on baseball cards for several years. Tell me those Baseball Heroes cards aren't just so cool looking. Man. I don't know how many of you guys do these, but I'm not a, a giant fan of these. These uh, Sweet Spot Classics because A, they're insanely thick. Look how thick that is. And it's, you know, basically a baseball, signed baseball. And so many of them turn to crap over time. The autographs fade. I mean, they look just look awful. But this one looks really good because it was done in ballpoint pen. But, man, if they used any kind of Sharpie or whatever, they were just atrocious. Atrocious. There's a shiny Bob Feller milestone materials from Topps Tribute. There is... Rick Farrell, Hall of Famer for the Red Sox. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. All right. All my A's guys are going to go nuts now because here's a bunch of Raleigh Fingers. Call to the Hall, Raleigh Fingers. Got to get another stack rolling here. It's a pretty card. Raleigh Fingers. Look at the sunglasses. He's, and he was even wearing an upper deck cap. Boy, talk about doing it right. Good job, upper deck. This was a cool set from Retro called Incre Ink Credible. <laughs> That's pretty clever. And I love the background picture for the autograph. That's actually a very well designed card. Good job, upper deck. Uh, another fingers. And another one. Raleigh Fingers, man, you can get, if you pay more than $10 for a Raleigh Fingers, I mean, you can get a good, you can get, you can pay more, but you can, you can get a nice Raleigh Fingers autograph for 10 to 15 bucks shipped, like done. So maybe that's what I should have been doing this whole time, talking about kind of how, if you want to start a Hall of Fame autograph collection, it's really super easy and really not that expensive. Um, 
Like if you if you don't want panini because you want, you know, um, team names and all that kind of stuff, logos and all that, there's plenty of cards like this. That's a really cool card that you can get really for similar prices. There's another one that's really hard to see. Number to 25, SP Legendary Cuts. How about some Carlton Fisk now? Carlton Fisk, Pudge. Epic Signatures, awesome, awesome subset from Upper Deck Century Legends. Unbelievable. So cool. All right, I'm telling you guys, I'm not going more than an hour, so we've got about 15 more minutes. I'm not even through two rows. I've got four rows. Actually, i got way more than that, but... We're only on the F's. That's a cool leaf buyback. Carlton Fisk on card. Number to 72, which is was his number. There's another Fisk. Five star, number to 55. Love five star. As you guys are aware, if you've watched my channel for any period of time. There's a trademarks. Leaf Limited. Little two jersey swatches there in the form of his 72, and then Carlton Fisk. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I totally agree, Mike. You know, when you get a first Bowman autograph of a guy that's never even played in the major leagues, and it's 10 times as much as you could, I mean, you could literally buy 10 or 15 Hall of Famer autographs for the price of some of these or more. Man, look at that shine. Holy crap. Put your sunglasses on. Carlton Fisk. It's a cool card. Uh, dual jersey of Carlton Fisk and Mike Piazza with Mike Piazza on the A's. All right, Whitey Ford. And then, so that's the pack inserted autograph. And then I have. Another one that's just an IP autograph on the base card. Those kind of look cool together, don't they? Let's see. I got another Whitey Ford. Whitey Fords, you can probably get, you can get a nice Whitey Ford for 20 to 30 bucks. Here we go, this is neat. This is a, a dual Hall of Fame relic card of Nellie Fox and Ted Lyons. Number to 25. Here's a Pantheon. I don't know how you guys feel, but any of the Panini stuff, if it's an old school player, I'm much less bothered by the No Logos thing. Uh, it just doesn't make a big deal. It's not as big a deal to me. It's a cool card. Oh, here's another Nelly Fox. Bat card. So another thing, I'm going to talk about this for a second because it cracks me up. So this is Legendary Cuts. Well, Legendary Cuts, by the name itself, means that they use cut autographs to make a lot of the cards for the old players. And the sets are incredibly popular if you go back and start looking at them. They're insanely popular, which means insanely pricey. But what they did most of the time was they took an autograph, like this is from a Hall of Fame, you know, the yellow plaque, Hall of Fame plaque, and they cut it up. They ruin a perfectly good piece of autograph memorabilia by cutting it up, and they did it on, they'd cut up Perez Steels and other certified autograph cards just to insert them into another card. That is so baffling to me. And then they, you know, hand number it to nine. Like that makes any difference. Yeah, just because you ruined something else and numbered it to nine. Silly. To me, it's terrible. Here's a Frankie Frisch. The Fordham Flash was his nickname. It's like the green framed parallel dual. It's not even a jersey. I think it tells you on the back because I think I read this. No, it just says material cut. Number 10, though. That's cool. I thought it said somewhere like that's a like a warm up or something or a jacket or all right here's one of the prettiest cool old signatures I hope JD's ready 
or not JD, JT. Triple crimp around 24. One of the prettiest old school autographs is Charlie Garinger. Golly, he just, he signed a lot as Chaz Garinger. Just gorgeous looking. So cool. Here's the signature of a, it just looks like a kid signed it. Bob Gibson's signature is so funny. How old is everyone here? Just curious. I am 45. Old Man River over here, 45 years old. I do have a ton more Garinger, by the way, JT. I just, they're in other things. There's a Bob, another Bob Gibson. There's a pretty sweet five-star career year, Bob Gibson. So Bill, the Hall of Fame collector, will love that one. The Mechanical Man, that's right. Andy, Charlie Garinger. I have a lot of Bob Gibson. I'm a Bob Gibson fan. Not everybody is, but I am. Bob Gibson. He's a bitter man, but man, he was a really good pitcher. <laughs> uh, there's a legendary cuts jersey card. Hall of Fame executive Pat Gillick. Oh, and another one. And another one. It's from 87 Donruss, opening day. God, I should have made that a trivia question just now. That would have been funny. Who can name that set based on their purple borders? 87 Donruss, opening day. Okay, there's a famous error card of a should-be Hall of Famer in this set. Who can tell me, A, who the player that it should be and who the player is that's actually pictured? I wonder who can tell me that. Um, Tom Glavin. I hope I have it. I have a really cool Tom Glavin. Barry and Johnny Ray. That's right, Michael and Dave got it, and Rookie Monster got it. There's a Leaf Q Pure. I have a Mariano Rivera of that card, but we're not going to get to the R's. I can tell you that. There's another Leaf Acetate card. Put the ass in acetate. There's another leaf. Purple, shiny coolness on card. Glavin's cheap too, man. You can get Glavin easy. He's not expensive at all. There's a National Treasures Glavin, number 25, jersey auto card. Just a plain old jersey card with the Mets. I'm going to finish this row, guys, and then we're going to be done. So you got you got a pretty good stack still to, to watch. So don't worry. I'm not going anywhere just yet. There's a Lefty Gomez. Great pitcher for the Yankees. Number 25, jersey card. Look at that pinstripe. That's pretty sweet. Goose Goslin. Leon Allen. Nobody called him Leon Allen. He was Goose Goslin. The Washington Senators, great player. Unbelievable player, actually. Go look him up. You'll be impressed. So I had a Lou Brock and a Gary Carter of this. There's the Goose Gossage of these finest moments. They're neat. And there's another Goose Gossage. I think he... He's wearing a pirate's hat there, those old pillbox pirate's hats. That's what that looks like. Or it's the White Sox, I don't know. There's a Goose Gossage I got. God, I just did this video. Oh, I got it, I think, on eBay. Um, for super cheap. Told you guys, if a Hall of Famer's played for the Rangers, I need to have an autograph of him on a Rangers card. This is a Leaf buyback. Autograph number to 54 on a 1991 leaf, I think. Yes, 91 leaf. God, look at all the people. Look at all the teams Goose Gossage have paid for. Good grief. Name that last team in 1990. That's a cuss word in a lot of places. <laughs> I would hate to live in that town. Oh my gosh. 
Okay. Here's another goose sausage. And I think the only Phillies Pedro card is the Heritage card, right? There's a legendary lineage. Oh, y'all, I hope y'all watched my video last night. I got a awesome 1940 play ball of this player, Hank Greenberg, Hammer and Hank. Unbelievable player. Unreal. There's a bat card of his. More Tiger stuff for JT. Hopefully he's JT still here. Um, Hank Greenberg, Ralph Kiner, and Billy Herman. And look, it shows Pittsburgh. That's because Hank Greenberg in his last season got, I guess, traded to Pittsburgh back then. That's still pretty neat. Triple. This card's pretty slick. UD Upper Deck Vintage. It's a great set. You've got Timeless Teams. You've got uh, Hank Greenberg, Willie McCovey, Eddie Murray, Frank Thomas. God, there's some pretty great guys. That guy's pretty good. Ken Griffey. Pretty good ball player. It's from UD Trilogy was the name of that set. Got another, there's another Griffey. I wish I had more Griffey autographs. It's just, he's just so expensive. By the way, isn't that cool? That's classic Griffey, right? He's hitting in the home run derby or whatever, I think. Hap, cap backwards. I mean, that's how I remember him. He was awesome. Here is Epic Materials. Lefty Grove bat card for the Philadelphia Athletics. There's a Vlad Guerrero. Not Junior. Actually the Hall of Famer Vlad Guerrero. And number to 50. Is that triple threads, I guess? Here's his 97 millennium marks. This is hilarious because look where he signed it. Players were supposed to sign down below, but not Vlad. He just said, I'm going to sign wherever it is, and he did. Look at that. There's his... Uh, I love, for some reason, I'm a huge fan of the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. I think it's just a great event. and I love the that Topps Update typically has the All-Star Game jersey swatch cards. And uh, here's Vlad's from when he made the All-Star team in 2010 in his only one and only season with the Rangers, and they went to the World Series for the first time ever. Coincidence? I think not. You know, coincidence is spelled like Joe Incidence with a J. What, what TV show is that from? If you can name that, I'll be impressed. Tony Gwynn. You know, I wish I could get a Tony Gwynn Diamond Kings card that's already slabbed. Only someone had a Tony Gwynn Diamonds Kings card. But there's a five star, which is awesome. Tony Gwynn jersey. Okay, this is sweet. Look at that, Maiko. Roy Halliday, All Star. I told you all I love these. <laughs> and this is the. It's the parallel version. I can't remember what they call it. And it's numbered to 60. Very, very cool. All right. Uh, Bucky Harris. Great Hall of Fame manager. But that's a bat card of his. There's the bat card of Bucky Harris as well. There you go, JT. Harry Heilman. Oh, Harry Heilman. Unbelievable. Go look up his stats. Just so, so good. Um, great ball player. There is Harry Heilman. And, oh, let us let me show you how good he was. Oh, he only hit 398. Good grief. 
and Al Simmons for the Philadelphia A's, who's a catcher, by the way, hit 392. Good grief. Unbelievable. Okay, there is Ricky Henderson. Ricky. Ricky loves Ricky. Ricky's actually kind of pricey. I mean, you're going to pay $50 to $75 for a nice Ricky Henderson autograph. You can find them cheaper, but most of his stuff is, is expensive. But that's a cool on-card. Sports Heroes from Leaf. All-time stolen base king. Yes, he was. <laughs> Go to bed, people. Dave. Hey, Dave. About time. Um... There's another Leaf Pure. It's on card, but it's an acetate card. Leaf Q. This was one of my tribute purchases in my Silver Jackify challenge that we did. Ricky Henderson dual jersey card. Very cool. Ricky was in the 3000 Hit Club, so he has this cool Pantheon jersey card. Shows him with the Mariners. Late in his career, Ricky just kind of started bouncing around. I think he played for the Red Sox and the Padres and the Mariners and the... Golly, probably paid, played for every American League team at one point. Late in his career. There's a cool New York Yankees jersey clippings from Donruss Greats. All right, we're all. I literally got just a couple of cards left, and then we're gonna shut this off. Cause, hey, I'm glad Dave's here. Cause I'm about to show a card that he sent me. There's Billy Herman on this cheesy old time cub, all time Cubs card. But hey, it's a Hall of Fame on card autograph. Here is one of the uh, cards that Dave sent me. Incredibly generous. There we go. There's another Billy Herman. And this will be the last one, guys. Some shine to finish off is a Milestone Materials Billy Herman jersey. And, man, that's it. Uh, here, I'll just set this one down and talk for a second before I let you guys go. Thanks for everybody just hopping on here and, you know, kind of shooting the bull with me and uh, going over some Hall of Fame autographs. I've got more. So if this is something you'd like to see, if you've stayed this long and you want to see me do this again at some point, I would be happy to. It's just fun, and uh, I'll rummage whenever you all want. i got more to show if you all want to see it. We're only on the H's, so lots of cool stuff to continue to go through. We'll do that again. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining in, and we'll catch you guys soon. Everybody have a great